There are other ways to describe how much solute you have in a given amount of solution or solvent other than concentration which equals the moles of solute divided by liters of solution. You might be asked to calculate the mass percent of a solute in a given solution and so mass percent or the percent equals the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent because those two masses added together the mass of the solution. Right? When you multiply that by 100, that's when you get the percent. Then, you could be asked, well, don't, don't do it in mass, do it in moles. So then we, cu we calculate, instead of a mole percent, we go mole fraction, which is just the same thing as the mass percent calculation, except don't do the, the multiplying by 100. But here's the deal. You have to find the moles, though. So the chi, that's what that's called, actually. That's that Greek letter there. So the chi, or the mole fraction, equals the moles of solute divided by the moles of solute plus the moles of solvent. You heard of parts per million and parts per billion? Okay, so if somebody says calculate the parts per million of this certain solute in this given amount of either liquid or air, well, parts per million is the milligrams of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. Parts per million, right? So there's a million difference between the two. Milli and kilogram, that is 10 to the negative 3, and that's 10 to the 3, and the difference is 10 to the 6. You could be asked to find the parts per billion of something. Well, what's parts per billion? Parts per billion is going to be a 10 to the 9 difference, or you could go the micrograms, which is 10 to the negative 6 grams of a solute, divided by kilograms of solvent, just convert to those two units, the difference is 10 to the 9. So that's parts per billion. And then, there's a crazy one, molality. Now, I know, that's molarity, that's concentration, that's molality, and that can be calculated and it's defined by the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. Why would you need something like that? To do a calculation we're going to do later in terms of calculating the new freezing point and boiling points of solvents when you put a solute into that. Now, let's do one of these questions here that might look complicated at first, but you've got to just simplify and break it down, you'll be all right. Here it comes. Here's the question. You're given nitric acid and concentrated nitric acid, which has a mass percent in solution of 70. 70% 70 of that solution's mass is HNO3. Right, and you're given the density of 1.42 grams per cubic centimeter. What? What do you need that for? It's coming. But what that really means is 1.42 grams per milliliter, cubic centimeter, milliliter. Okay, so with that information, can you calculate the mole fraction, the molality, and the concentration? That's big M, moles per liter. Okay, so now you've got 70% by mass HNO3 in solution. What does that mean? That means if you have a hundred grams of that solution, 70 grams of it would be HNO3. Okay, logically, with that and knowing that you've got a hundred grams of solution now, okay, everything falls into place. So, if you're looking for the mole fraction, well, we have to convert the mass of both the solute and the solvent into moles. And then it's the, the moles of the solute divided by the moles of solution, which is the moles of the solute plus the moles of the solvent. So you see what I did there? I took the grams of HNO3 divided by the molar mass. That's the moles. Moles of solute divided by. Here is the moles of the solute, just done here again, plus the moles of the solvent. Moles of the solvent? What's the solvent? Water. How much of the solution of 100 grams? is water? Well, 70 is going to be the mass of the nitric acid, so the other 30 is going to be grams of the water. And when you do this calculation here by, hey, doing this math, this math, adding those together, then dividing all of that into this, right, you get 0 0.40. No unit for mole fraction, because all of these units cancel out to leave you with 0 0.40. Okay, so that's a mole fraction. Now, okay, can, since I did moles already, well, in mole fraction, I'm going to do molality next. Well, you could do moles per liter, but look, watch molality. The molality is moles of the solute divided by kilograms of the solvent. Hey, that's easy enough. 
Here's that moles of the solute. Here's the moles of the solute calculation divided by the kilograms of the solvent. The water is 30 grams, and then turning that into kilograms, 0 0.030 kilograms, gives you 37. That's a pretty big number, isn't it? 37 moles per kilogram. Moles per kilogram is the unit for molality. Okay, now you've got to find the concentration. That can be the toughest one here, but you just have to think. Okay, so we're looking for the concentration, big M. Concentration is moles of solute. So I'm leaving this right here because it's still, it's still good. Moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. And we don't have liters of solution anywhere here. What do we know about the solution? The solution is 100 grams but you're given a density. And the density is in grams per cubic centimeter, grams per milliliter. Hey, if you've got grams and grams per mil, you can calculate mils. And mils leads you to liters, and that's the answer. So here it is. You're gonna take that 100 grams of solution, right, solution, and it's times, what is the density? It is 1.42 grams, of solution, solution, for every one milliliter of the solution. Oh yeah, and now we've got milliliters of solution, but we don't want milliliters, we want liters. So cancel out the milliliters and leave yourself liters by dividing by a thousand. Ladies and gentlemen, when you do this math right here, that gives you the liters of the solution, when you divide it into this term here, you get the number 16, big M, 16 moles per liter, which is the concentration, rounded to two significant digits, of concentrated nitric acid. So just remember to use that density. It's there for a reason to be able to finish off that question.